How's it going everyone? Manos Party here, bringing another episode in the Pokemon TCG series. So today is a bit more of a discussion video. Um, I've had a lot of comments recently talking about Soaring Storm and as to how good it is. So I've actually been playing it quite a bit recently and I must say I have been wondering whether Soaring Storm is actually a better deck than Relentless Flame and ironically I jump into a game against Relentless Flame. So maybe this will help prove the point. Um, so this really did come about from just uh, mainly the, the top 10 videos and people discussing because first place has always been Relentless Flame and second place has been Soaring Storm. And there's been a lot of discussion about the reliability of Soaring Storm as a deck over Relentless Flame. Now, one of the big things with this is that Relentless Flame relies on getting the Nidder Queen and the Charizard online. Now, if you're able to get Nidder Queen online, you're in a pretty good spot. And it's relatively easy steamroll from there. But if you can shut down that Nidder Queen, the deck really does struggle quite a bit. Um, and Rentless Flame relies on getting a super early but stage 2 off, basically. And Soaring Storm, on the other hand, tends to play wider. There's more options in the deck, which makes it quite reliable. So I've been playing it quite a bit, mainly actually in events, and then quite a few times in just the normal ladder. I have actually gotten quite bad luck with events. I'm generally coming like second, which is a bit frustrating. Um, but overall, I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, I'm actually not sure what to do if I want to go for the draw or Pokemon Fan Club. Uh, actually, I actually think I want to go for Pokemon Fan Club and bring out her. Huh. So, this is a predicament. I've got Tornadus, but both my Thunderuses are prize cards. So this is one of the worst situations I can have. Ironically, I actually had this yesterday as well. Um, Pidgey's got a one retreat cost, right? I'm actually going to retreat Pidgey into Grimer to keep my draws going. Because this is a problem. Uh, this is a very, very big problem. And I don't know how I'm going to solve this easily. Um... Mm. I should get Lantern online first. So, <laughs> ironically, this is a terrible situation and a really bad showcase for this deck. Because usually it's really easy to get Tornadus and Thunderous off because you can just poke one fan club. And you can get it going pretty quickly. Um, unfortunately, both of my Thunderous are prize cards. Which is a huge problem. And seeing that my opponent's charging up that Charmeleon, I'm a little bit worried that they've got a super super early Charizard which if they do I'm really gonna struggle um, so let's bring out this Pidgeotto and let's get these draws going so this is one of the things that actually took me a while to get really used to with this deck getting Pidgeotto online early super crucial it needs to happen um, I'm actually gonna send this hand away and let's see what else I can get going uh, that's a bit unfortunate Ah, there you go. Dratini. That's exactly what I needed. Okay. This is getting better. So as I was saying, that getting this Pidgeotto online early is super crucial. Because you're doubling your draw speed with airmail. And on top of that, you're getting a second... Well, your second draw is actually better than your first one. Because you can choose which card you want to get. Now, the only issue is I'm seeing the Grimer in my active spot. And I really need to get Grimer out of there. Let's see what I can get from Bugcatcher. If I can get a switch or something. Okay, I got a switch for next turn, which is actually pretty good. Because then I can go into Lantern, get that KO, and see what happens after that. Let's get Lantern online. Let's airmail this. And I guess we can get another Tornadus for now. And hopefully I can draw into a Thunderous. Now, the nice thing is I've got a super, super early Dragonite. Well, not super early, but I've got a decently early Dragonite. There's a switch as well, which is actually quite nice. So what I want to try and do now is switch out the Grimer for Lantern, knock out the Farfetch'd, and then the problem is there's the Charizard sitting on the back line, which I'm not quite sure how to deal with yet, other than the Dragonite, which can come in and get rid of it. It's not an ideal situation, but it will work. So let's get this moving. Um, what I want to do, let me airmail and see what I get. Uh, I'd rather go for the energy in this case. 
All right. Um, I'm not going to reshuffle this hand anytime soon. So I'm actually going to use this as a switch for now. Because I might want to switch out Dragon out to a later stage. So let's get these going. And let's start charging up Dragon Out and getting ready for Dragon Out to come in next turn to deal with a Charizard. Which I think my opponent does have. Um, let's just put that one more energy there. And I'm really hoping to get a Thunderous. Ooh, no. I really hope to get Thunderous from this prize card. Um, because I need to start getting that momentum going. That is probably one of the worst things I could have gotten. Okay. So it looks like my opponent doesn't have the Charizard just yet. Um, again, if they do, I can go into the Dragonite. That worries me in case they've got another Queen in the back line. And next turn, that Rapidash is probably going to agility me, which is going to be very frustrating um, because it's a chance to just not deal damage to it. And I've been sitting behind a, a Rapidash wall more often than I would like to admit. Um, it's a very frustrating Pokemon to try and bash your way through. Um... I want to keep this bench slot open for that Thunderous that might come in next turn. There's nothing I want to really hit with... Uh, actually, I want to preserve these energies for now. So at the moment, I don't think I want to play anything. I really want to hope for um, this Thunderous coming out. And let's see. Again, the energy. Okay. That's a bit of a problem. Um, it's going to come down... It's going to come down to what this Rapidash does. So, I know they're going to go for agility. Now, what's going to matter is whether they're going to get agility off or not. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to switch out this Lantern into Grimer. And the reason for that is that I don't really mind about stalling now because my opponent's already online. Um, the reason I switched out that Grimer earlier was because I didn't want to give my opponent more time. Now, they did get the heads, which is why I'm going to switch out because I can't do anything. So, I'm actually going to use the switch to go into Grimer. Fortunately, there's not much I can do. Let's airmail this. Uh, let's get another bug catcher. Um, I guess I may as well charge up Tornadus. To get Tornadus online. Because I will use it at a later stage. Let's put that over there. Um, I'm scared of actually drawing my deck out, in all honesty. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to collect and see what I get. I was actually really hoping for a um, Dratini from that draw. But the other thing is I can go into a second Lantern. Lantern with 140 damage. That's a pretty good sweet spot. Let's see. That's what I was talking about. It's super frustrating trying to play against this. Because it just sits there. And now I'm actually going to go on Pidgeotto because I've got my draws out. I'm not really going to use it any, f any further. So I can use Pokemon Fan Club this turn to bring out that Tratini and to bring out the Pidgey um, just for reasons. So let's bring out that Tratini, start building into another Dragonite on the following turn. Um, again, there's not much I can do, so let's get that Chincho down and let's start building into a second Lantern. Okay. Again, I just need to hope this agility stops procking. Because there's unfortunately very little I can do. I've just got to wait for agility to stop. And that's one of the issues I have playing against Blankless Flame. Um, I don't like agility. It's so powerful in the theme format because of the lack of gusting. And it's one of the big things that makes Blankless Flame just so powerful. Okay, it's finally gone down, which means I can start doing some damage to it. So I should send out... I'm going to send out Lantern on the stage because I don't actually have an abundance of energies. Um, so there's nothing I really want to play here other than evolving my Dratini and evolving my Chincho. Okay. Um, I'm going to lose these energies, unfortunately, but there's not much I can do about that. So, uh, as for plays, I don't think there's any other plays I want to do because I'm actually running a bit low in terms of cards. Um... So let's get... I didn't actually need to put that water energy. That was a bit of a mistake. So let's get this off. Let's do some damage. Let's finally get rid of Rapidash. So the last thing is that they bring in Charizard. My dragon, I can get a KO. They bring in Queen. Oh my word. I need that Thunderous so badly. And it's just not coming out. Oh man. 
Wow, my opponent actually yielded? I'm okay with that. Um, still, it's a bit of a bad game, but again, I did get the win against Glenta's Flame. So let's try this again, and hopefully we don't have Thunderous is sitting in our prize cards. So I had that in my previous, not previous, well, in the previous day, uh, I had it that both of my Tornadus were prize cards. Now, that's a little bit better because Thunderous works better by itself than um, Thunderous does, than Tornadus does, sorry. Yet again, a Relentless Flame. I feel like right now is a really good time to be playing Unseen Depths because there are a lot more Relentless Flames at the moment. Okay, let's see. This is actually a better start because I can have Grimer as my active and Pidgey on my back line, which turn two will be turning into a Pidgeotto. So that's actually really, really good. Um, I like the start quite a lot. And I can Lily on my first turn, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a draw Pokemon to put that energy onto. Eh, that wasn't a great draw, but anyway. Uh, actually I'll get that energy down just so I can get a better proc with Lily. And, eh, arguably not great. Um, energy is, although not, they're not really a bad thing. This hand is pretty bad. Um, I'm most likely going to be... Actually, I can use Pokemon Fan Club, I guess. So it's not terrible. I can use Pokemon Fan Club and then Cynthia on the following turn. Alright, so let's get our Pidge uh, Pidgeotto down. Let's see what we get from Pidgeotto before we use Pokemon Fan Club. 100% Pokemon communication. Let's go for that. Let's Pokemon Fan Club this. Let's get the two big boys down. And... From there, as much as I want to go into a Tornadus, I actually think Thunderous would be a better option. My, worrying, my worry though is the lack of energies. Um, Pokemon Communication, I'm going to hold off on to just yet. Um, okay, I should have brought out the Dratini. I was, I was considering bringing out Dratini or Chincho, and I wasn't really sure which one I wanted. I should have actually gone for the Dratini. Um, so next turn I can go into Thunderous Gale and hopefully get a knockout on this Ponita before it evolves into Rapidash. And I can do that, so that's fantastic. Anytime I can shut down a Rapidash, I'm happy. So let's bring, see what we get from Airmail. Uh, let's bring out that Dragonite. Let's drop that Chincho. Let's Pokemon Communication one of the Lanterns away to bring in a Dratini. Oh, one of the Dratini is actually a prize card. We can board into Dragon out in two turns, which is pretty good. So let's get that down. Let's switch out into Thunderous. Let's get that Lightning Energy going. I definitely don't want a Cynthia this turn. And let's Thunderous scale. So we've got the first prize card, which is really good. And that's one of the things that I do like about this deck, and I mentioned earlier, is that it builds wide. And what I mean by that is that there's lots of different options to actually build up into. Because you've got Thunderous, you've got Tornadus, you've got Lantern, and you've got Dragonite. So basically four ways you can build into this, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I guess there is Pidgeot, but that's kind of a bit of an iffy one. <laughs> My opponent yielded. So that's two wins against against Relentless Flame with this deck. So I am I must must say I've actually kind of been won over to it. Um, and I think the reason for it is just like I said, the fact that it can build wide, the fact that it's so versatile, um, because it's a bit more difficult to shut down. And it's got better coverage. Um, with the lightning style of the deck, it's effective against the water type decks. Um, with the normal side, with the Thunderous, uh, with the Tornadus, sorry, it's resistant against Towering Heights, which is always a good thing. And it's got Dragonite, which just hits everything. And basically has no weakness because no one plays Fairy. So let's see if I can get an early... There's a Tornadus. Um, I can actually get an early Thunderous going as well, so I can hopefully apply some serious pressure to my opponent's bench, which would be great. Problem with this is if my opponent goes for Lightning Lead, I'm in trouble. Now, I don't think they will. I figured they wouldn't. Oh, there. That's actually perfect. Which means I can hopefully Pokemon Communication into... Um, I can Pokemon Communication into Pidgeotto. So I wanna go, no, I actually want to get early damage on the bench. Let's keep this going. So turn two, that means I can do a draw three. Hopefully get some energies going to get the Thunderous, uh, to get the Tornadus really online. 
And the fact that my opponent went for the furrow through, it's a slightly slower start, which is really, really good. And if I get this Tornadus early online and really start punishing their bench, I'll be sitting, sitting in a pretty good spot. Uh, because obviously I'm very scared of the Marie line, uh, especially with Tornadus being weak to it. And Naganadale is not a Pokemon I like to see at any time. So hopefully I can get the Tornadus online as soon as quickly. Turn 3, I want to be hitting with Thunderous Tornado. Uh, tornado, sorry, Tornado. <laughs> and dealing damage to my opponent's bench. And that bench snipe might come in handy later down the line. Now it does look like my opponent is wondering where to put their energy. And I understand that because, I mean, yes, they'll get 20 damage off on me, but they're not going to get the draws from it, which is a bit unfortunate. But again, 20 damage is 20 damage. Okay, uh, that's a bit of a problem. Okay, I did get the energies to come through. So there's Pokemon Communication, bye bye Dragonite, and let's bring out some draw mechanics. There's Pidgeotto. Oh, it's the only one in my deck, which means the other one is a prize card. I don't want to let that Pidgeotto go down. Let's bring that Pidgeotto. And uh, nothing else to do here other than airmail. Well, I guess I'm taking Cynthia then. And unfortunately, we're going to knuckle punch this turn. But next turn, the Thunderous Tornado can start and I can start hitting that bench. And I should get a knockout on this next turn. My worry is an early Ampharos. Um, I'm really worried about a turn 3 Ampharos. I'm hoping my opponent can't bring it out. If they can, I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble. Because uh, I've got 100... It's pretty beefy. I think it's 150 HP. So it means I need to get two Thunderous Tornadoes off before it's in range for Thunderous to knock out in a later turn with uh, Raging Thunder. The fact that I can start hitting their bench from next turn and applying that spread damage is going to be so nice. So I'm wondering if I'm going to be seeing an er a very early knock in a dull. That scares me. That scares me a lot. Because, I mean, they're sitting in a pretty good position. The fact that they can go into Naganadel next turn. And they can hit me for 80 damage. Which won't get a knockout. But it's going to put me on <laughs> very few hit points remaining. And the problem is, with the Tornadus going down, I don't have a plan B. Because I don't have a way to... I haven't got a way to uh, build up energies on my back line yet. Which is very scary. So... Uh, the Pidgey I don't actually need. I'm really considering just going for Cynthia and getting a fresh hand. Um, but on the same side, Pokemon Fan Club, I can get another Tornadus out. Actually, I don't want to overcommit to Tornadus. I can get the Dratini out. And quite frankly, I think I'm supposed to get a Grimer because of Ampharos. Quite frankly, I'm probably going to go for another Thunderous. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to get the Pidgey down and just in case I get lucky with that prize card. And uh, let's see. So, Thunderous Tornado. They start applying their spread damage and hopefully I get lucky and get a... I don't think I airmailed that turn. I think I forgot to airmail. Damn, that's unfortunate. Oh, now going to double. We'll actually get the KO this turn. My opponent yielded. Alright, so that's these trade wins with this deck. Um, so really let's go into why I'm saying it's actually super reliable and I'm really really enjoying playing it. Um, and I must say it has actually helped me get further along here. As I said I've gotten pretty bad luck with it in events, I generally get second place with it. Um, which I guess it isn't bad but it's not ideal. So let's jump into one more game and let's see if we can pick up a fourth straight win with this deck. As I said, enjoying it because it's versatile. Enjoying it because it's a very widespread. Oh, dude, I love that deck. I love that uh, Tropical Shakedown deck. Uh, Kiki Jiki Junzo. Kiki Jiki Junzo. <laughs> cool name, dude. Um, Tropical Shakedown. Such a fun deck to play. Uh, definitely props for playing it. I, like, I love when people play the older decks. I usually do play the older theme decks. Um, not so much the last two weeks because I've been trying to get a lot of trainer tokens. Um... This is not a fantastic start, but I guess it's not terrible. I might have to do a super early Dragonite. Which is not something I like to do because it burns through energies really, really quickly. Um, but it might just have to happen. Um, I guess Grimer can just sit here drawing for a few turns, which would be quite nice. 
I would have liked to get like a turn two knockout on this um, Rodata, which would have been really cool. But unfortunately, I don't have a way to do that. If they can evolve this Kubo next turn, they can actually get a really, really good energy advantage. Um, but a lot of Marowak with Limbo Limbo really accelerates energy nicely. You don't need energy there, but anyway. I'm not sure if my opponent knows that Rattata doesn't actually need energy. Unless they're building into something for the next turn. Come on, evolve. Let's get these evolutions going. Let's go into Bug Catcher. And... Bit of a bad coin flip, but let's carry on building up this Dragonair. Uh, I, I don't really want to be using Destructive Whirlpool, but at this stage, unless I draw a Dragonite, I might have to. Not a great draw. Okay. Um, these draws really are not coming through for me right now. Which scares me a lot. Um, yeah, this is not a good situation to be sitting in. Because I, <laughs> as reliable this deck is, I'm not getting that reliability out. I think I'm going to have to play into Dragonair, which I don't really want to do. But I guess the Whirlpool does shut down their energy. I'm surprised I didn't keep that in for Evil Orders. I mean, that Evil Orders is amazing. Okay, there's a the Thunderous. I finally got something to actually build off of. So let's start putting energies onto that Thunderous. And let's go for a Collect. And hopefully we get something a bit better. I don't need three Dragonairs. I really don't need three Dragonairs. The thing is, I got no way to switch out this Grimer next turn either. Hmm. Let's see. I wonder what my opponent's gonna do. Because, like, I would love with this Pokemon Fan Club to go into Thunderous. Um. Uh, into Tornadoes, sorry. Because I could put some serious hurt on my opponent's bench. But it's going to come down to draws. And at the moment, unfortunately, I'm just not getting good draws. Okay, that's the last execute. There's a Chincho. It's something, I guess. Um, let's Pokemon Fan Club this. Let's bring out that Tornadus. And let's bring out that Pidgey. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to play Pidgey. Because Thunderous is only going to come in when Grimer goes down anyway. Which by that stage, then I can play Tornadus. Hopefully it doesn't bite me. And uh, let's see. Well, there's the Dragonite. Which is not bad, because it means it does kind of fix my energy problem. But again, I'm still sitting in a really awkward position. And the fact that I've got this Grimer in my active slot, which I thought would have gone down like two turns ago. Hmm, and Endeavor. Endeavor can do quite a bit of damage, which is the scary thing. Ooh, that's that's questionable. That is a very questionable play. Because I can now bring in Thunderous on this next turn and get an instant KO on Radicate. I understand wanting to get your Pokemon out of there, but this puts you in a very awkward position. To be fair, if they've got a um, Executor on the back. That's going to be dealing a lot of damage. That's 2, 4, 6. It's 80 damage, which is not going to pick up the knockout just yet, but it's definitely going to hurt. Oh, they're going for evil orders. Very clever. Very, very clever. Because unless I draw a switch, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. Because I can't let that eradicate sit there. I drew the switch. That's huge. Because I can now go there. And get that going up there. I can switch into Thunderous. Um, I don't need to play that energy just yet. And now I can just go for Raging Thunder. My concern definitely is the Executor. Uh, coming. There's the Pidgeotto, which means I can now get my draws getting a bit better. I'm considering Raging Thundering my Grimer. Just to open up a bench slot for Tornadus. 
because I actually want to get Tornados online. Because as I said, hitting this bench would be really, really nice. And I did shut down my opponent's energies, so unless... I don't know, it's going to depend on what they have in their hand. Um, I wonder if they've got the Executor already. Yeah, they do. Okay. If they've got a Grass Energy, I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble. Um, again, it's not the end of the world, because I can bring in Dragonite, but it's not a great position for me. Because I still don't have a great hand. That's a problem. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, it's two, four, six, 80 damage, 100 damage. If they can get one more energy in that discard pile, Thunderous goes down. Which is a serious, serious problem for me. Um, although, they, I don't think they can now, because what I was worried about was Sophocles discarding like a psychic and a fighting energy. But thankfully, that didn't happen. They didn't have grass. Oh, that's huge. That, that didn't have grass. Okay, so now I can airmail. Uh, let's get that energy. I uh, may as well pick Pokemon Communication this Dragon Arrow away and give myself a second Lantern. <sighs> lantern is a prize card. Um, honestly, there's nothing I want then. I want to keep the cards there for draw potential, rather. Um, as for where I want this energy to go... I don't really want it to go anywhere, that's the thing, because I want to actually knock off my own Grimer. Which I think I'm going to do. So let's get rid of this Grimer. Because I want to open up my, my bench space. Because I want to get this Tornadus down. Make my opponent think that was a mistake. Okay. Um... I need to get some draw mechanics going. The problem is I'm sitting with a very, very dead hand right now. Ooh, there's the Sophocles. I'm a bit scared of the energies that discard here. There's the fighting. So that's 80 damage so far. Oh, sorry, 100 damage so far. So I will still be standing. Now, I don't think I want Thunderous to go down. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to retreat Thunderous into Tornadus, dropping the water energy. And let's airmail. Got the water energy, that's good. Because what I can do now is I can use Dragonite. Let's get those two energies. I was honestly considering using Fisherman for that water energy if I didn't draw one. And let's get that going over there. Nothing else to do, so let's go for Thunderous Tornado. And now I'm finally putting some damage on the bench. I got, got rid of a pretty big threat. And I'm still sitting in a pretty good position. Again, my energy and my hand situation is not ideal. But it's not terrible. Um, the nice thing is if I can get off one more Thunderous Tornado, I actually get a knockout on the Execute on the back. Which is quite nice. That's a nice look on... Um, Constellation Prize. Um, I hope they don't discard a Psychic Energy. Because that is one, two... It's still only 80 damage. Or 100 damage total. So I'm not going to get knocked out this turn. Which is something nice. Uh, is this the one that... Yeah, Enhanced Fang. Cool. So it's going to do a 60 damage straight. So Tornadus will be going down next turn. I'm okay with it. Um, in all honesty, I actually need those energies in the discard pile regardless. So I'm not terribly concerned about that, and I'm going to pick up a KO with it, which, oh, sorry, which is going to be decent. Okay, um, as for what I'm going to bring in after Tornadus, I think that Thunderous. I don't know, like, it's a bit frustrating that my other Thunderous and Tornadus are both prize cards yet again. Um, it's really frustrating, actually. Can I get it? There we go. I finally got myself some draw. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get, get these two energies down onto Dragonite. So that Dragonite is online if I need Dragonite to be online. Uh, Fisherman, not for one energy, so let's use Cynthia. 
Let's get ourselves a new hand, finally. This is much better. Much, much better. So what I can do now is honestly just attack. I'm gonna let this Tornadus go down. Hopefully I can get another Tornadus from knocking out that Execute. Let's see what we get. Get by the Thunderous, which I'm actually okay with. Uh, Cause I can bring in, th uh, Tornadus will get knocked out this turn. My old Thunderous can go in. I can play my new Thunderous. Um, and then take it from there. And hopefully draw into my next Tornadus. I must say, I do feel like Tornadus and Thunderous are really the the key to this deck. The, your main heavy hitters. What And I find Dragonite, for me, fits more into a support role. Um, ooh, Escape Rope. Hmm. I think it's just Dragonite. I'll just start pushing with Dragonite. Yeah, I guess that makes the most sense. So just pushing with Dragonite. I'm pretty sure Morrowak does not does not deal enough damage for this. There's two, four, six, eight, ten. It's 100 damage. That's gonna suck, but it's not gonna be a knockout. Yeah, that definitely hurt. Um, let's see. I actually wouldn't mind pulling a switch from this. Fortunately, I didn't. Um, so let's get this bug catcher online. Man, I never get lucky with bug catcher. So I'm gonna actually use hurricane charge now to charge up that lantern. Just to make sure it's online for next turn. Let's and let's start charging up the other one. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna hold on these energies just in case. And yep, let's go for it. Dragon Impact. Down to two prize cards, so goodbye to those energies. Actually, no, I wanted to say about that because I need that energy to go to Lantern. When Dragonite gets knocked out. I mean, down to two prize cards. So now, I presume the executive. Oh, oh, it makes sense because it's going to cost them zero to do it. So, that knocks up my Dragonite. Thunderous. Uh, Tornadus comes in, knocks that out, I'll be down to one prize card, and then Thunderous knocks out whatever they bring in. So in two turns, I've won the game. Um, I don't think they can do anything to that. No, they really can't do anything to that. That's fine. So in two turns, I win the game. And again, you can see that just this deck is so, so powerful. Um, I probably need to be careful because they're about to draw themselves out. They're literally on the cusp of drawing themselves out, so they do need to be careful about that. Um, energy retrieval, not bad. It's a little bit... It's too little too late. And yeah, this is going to be four wins with this deck, which is actually really awesome. So, again, I think I've actually been won over. That Soaring Storm is just an absolutely awesome deck. Because it builds wide and is super reliable. Um, that being said, I would love to hear your opinion on this. Do you find Soaring Storm better, or do you find Relentless Flame better? Um, as always, I do love hearing those comments, because, like, this is coming from my personal experience playing with it and against it. And I'm finding that I do struggle to take it down. Like, it's a very difficult deck to play against. Um, so I'd love to know if any of you have had a similar experience. Uh, like, I really do want to know whether the majority of people think that Relentless Flame is better, or if the majority still, uh, or if the majority think that Soaring Storm might actually be the contender and might take that prize away from Relentless Flame. Um, honestly, I'm on the side of Soaring Storm. It's, for me, reliability makes a good deck. I don't want to be winning 40% of the time. I want to be winning 80% of the time. And I want to get my answers out 80% of the time. So, for me, that's what does it with this deck. It's just the reliability of it. And the fact that it can claw back really, really well. Because Relentless Flame... Relentless Flame still struggles with the concept that it needs to get um, its stage 2s out. Which is a problem. Alright, um, so let's just bring in Lantern, and let's just Lightning Strike it. 
Lanterns. Ah, oh, my opponent yielded. Okay. Well, yeah, that's four straight wins with this deck. So I hope you did enjoy it. Please do leave comments down below which one, you, which deck you do think is better. Uh, I found those conversations really, really interesting. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, do uh, please do consider a like and subscribe. It does help me out quite a bit. And yeah, we almost at 500 mark, which means I'll be giving away five boosters. So yeah, that's always exciting. I still can't believe the channel's growing so well. So as always, thanks so much, everyone. Cheers. Enjoy.